Good morning, 638 here on News Radio 923 AM 1620. I'm Andrew McKay. It's Pensacola Morning News. If you didn't have the pleasure, and I say pleasure with air quotes, of watching the Santa Rosa County Commission meeting last night, um, well, I mean, I suppose it depends what kind of county government meetings you you think are worth watching. Uh, if you think the ones that are worth watching where they talk about a lot of the details of county government and uh, working out things and figuring out compromises and solving problems, then uh, not so good. If you think that uh, good government meetings, one where people are yelling and screaming a lot and angry, well, I mean, you know, great, great stuff. Um, I'll just tell you, I watched uh, most of it. I had to quit at about, hmm, I don't know, 9 o'clock or something, so I got about four and a half hours in. Uh, <laughs> you know, that's how far I went. Dan Shabler, he was there for the whole thing and he joins us now by phone. Dan, uh, Santa Rosa County Administrator Dan Shubler. Welcome back to the Pensacola Morning News, sir. Thank you, Andrew. You missed the last uh, several hours. We went to about 11.30 last night. Oh, I know it. I don't I know it. <laughs> I watched some and not all. Um, and I kind of tried to I tried to get caught up on what the landing was. Of course, the background of this is, and you and I have talked about this before, um, it has to do with the SCOP funding that we did not make application for, the county did not make application for, and uh, some people perceive that as uh, missing out on funds we would have gotten, about a million and a half dollars. You've repeatedly explained how it was a chance to possibly get funding and uh, that you take responsibility for the fact that the application was not made. You did not make that choice yourself, but there was somebody in the organization made it and you take responsibility for that. People think you lied to them. I think that you miscommunicated and it was a very confusing situation. All of that to the side, which is why everybody was upset that was at the meeting last night, all that to the side, what did the board wind up doing with regards to you last night? I think there were two outcomes. The uh, board voted to issue a, a letter of reprimand um, that, that hasn't been finalized. The chairman provided a, a draft letter to his fellow commissioners, asked for their comments back so that he could finalize, uh, and then he's going to ask for each of their signatures on that uh, letter. Um, and then the second thing that um, uh, Mr. Calkins brought forward, uh, actually I think a resident brought it forward, and uh, the board kind of um, – let, uh, consider the idea, and, and the direction was if uh, we could have a third party investigate. Um, Commissioner Parker obviously provided his comments and investigation. I had already asked uh, my administrative staff to put together a, a comprehensive report. Um, that was included in the backup yesterday, but um, Commissioner Calkins will bring back to the to the board at our work session next week, I think, some ideas on hiring an outside third party perhaps um, to uh, investigate. Um, several citizens brought up Commission on Ethics and State Attorney or the U.S. District Attorney, so I'm not sure where, where we'll land there, but um, the direction was for, for James to take the lead and bring something to the board next week. Something, but it, the best parallel I would think of would be something like a special investigator or an IG or something like that, at least on this particular case. So we'll, as you say, we'll see what he brings back with that regard. Um, clearly, the board, four, four members of the vo board, uh, did not have any appetite for even considering the idea of firing you, uh, which to my mind is good because they know the situation and Commissioner Calkins has kept pushing uh, for you to be out. But I, I have a different question for you. Aside from it's it's definitely related to all of this, but aside from the issue of you and your job, um, what kind of effect does this environment of all of the business of the county is sort of barely getting done in these meetings because it's so much about that? What effect is that having on morale among leadership in the county under your administration and for you know the ordinary members of your administration? How is this affecting their morale? Well. <laughs> I think in one word, negatively, um, is the simple answer. Uh, it's um, clear, you know, obviously our, our staff volunteer and, and uh, choose public service as their profession, um, and, and they do that. And it was acknowledged several times last night, and we've talked about it in our boardroom before, for um, not enough pay um, and not enough resources. That came up several times last night. But um, – we have a very small staff in Santa Rosa County. We are doing more now than um, has ever been done in the county when you t consider executing projects, undertaking new initiatives, um, reviewing the land development code, which hasn't happened since it was initially written 30 plus years ago. Um, so, so there is a, a high level of performance in the staff, but um, w the words matter and, uh, and, and the actions matter. And um, our staff watches on um, what goes on in the boardroom, um, and it, it has a negative impact. 
Yeah. Well, I, I certainly hope that this does pass and we can get back okay. to doing the actual business of the county. And I've said it many times. I'll say it again to you. I think you do a very good job. And I actually praised you for the way you've handled this in spite of the mistakes. I think that the response to those mistakes has been uh, far more virtuous than your critics are allowing. I did want to ask you about some of the stuff that was uh, on the agenda. One thing is uh, you've got an application in now, or you're going to put an application in with Triumph for some additional funding for the uh, truck driving school that PSC is going to operate, right? Well, Pensacola State College is actually, actually the applicant, but the Triumph Board has, from the beginning, said anything that comes out of a county has to be um, reviewed and endorsed by the Board of County Commissioners. So that, that was the action that we took last night. Pensacola State College is app applying to the Triumph Board for some additional funding for that um, project that's going out in East Milton, and the Board of County C Commissioners uh, endorsed that application and supported it. It will go to the Triumph Board next month. Outstanding. We also did a little, uh, made a small advance on the Pea Ridge Connector. Is that right? Um, the, the the action on the P Ridge connector, we've already um, issued the construction contract. This was to secure the rest of the uh, funding via a loan um, and uh, through our financial uh, advisors. Uh, they did a procurement, and we are able to secure that additional financing at 1.686% interest, um, so nice. a very low interest rate to, to complete that um, new four-lane road. And, and the one thing people may not have known about this project that came up last night, I thought was an interesting note, is Commissioner Parker, I think, was the one who mentioned in his long explanation in response to a challenge from a constituent, is that the extra funding necessary to four-lane instead of two-lane, which is very proactive and future-oriented, was a very small additional percentage cost to the project, right? Yes, absolutely. Which is always a good thing. Dan, you guys had some hiring that you announced last night, which was another kind of a bit of a misunderstanding and could have maybe avoided some confusion, but you did have some new hires in the county? Um, we, um, Ms. Rhonda Royals was our building official. She served 43 years um, with the county um, and, and served our residents well. She retired last month. Um, after um, seeking applications, uh, reviewing resumes, a couple rounds of interviews, um, we filled the building official position, um, and, and uh, that individual started uh, the first of last week, along with um, our new beach manager position. That was a position that the board approved um, before the pandemic, but we didn't fill because of the uh, decrease in tourism traffic uh, and obviously the period of time in the pandemic when we had the beach closed. Uh, but now with um, tourism returning, our um, and, you know, we're heading into the, the summer season. Uh, we did uh, offer and hire and fill that position, and that gentleman also started last Monday. Outstanding. And uh, you, you guys did a thing with the uh, the sheriff's department and one of their substations, which I, I didn't know the background of this, but I guess were they sharing a facility with the fire department in Midway? Was that the idea? Yes, sir. It's exactly right. In the mid, at the, one of the Midway Fire locations there, they had some space that uh, the sheriff used as a district office, similar to here in Pace, um, where, where the same thing occurs at the Pace um, headquarters fire station. The sheriff has a district office there. But Midway Fire District is, is expanding, and, and uh, they need to, that space. Um, the sheriff uh, will be dislocated from that space the 1st of October, so um, – Working with the sheriff's senior staff um, and uh, a local uh, landowner down there on 98, we have identified a potential solution um, and, and got some direction from the board how to go forward uh, on negotiating a, a purchase or a lease purchase um, with that homeowner so that some of the sheriff's um, senior folks and I will be meeting with that landowner over the next week to, to try and bring those terms and that deal to closure so that the sheriff can relocate there and still have everything he needs in a district office um, in the south end of the county there. Outstanding. And the last quick thing is, uh, I know you'll be proud of me, your marathon meeting last week of the land development code revisions, which has been a monster project and a 500-page output. Um, I watched almost all. I got through five hours of that meeting. <laughs> so very interesting stuff. What people don't realize is how much of your daily life issues or non-issues are considered and contemplated and written about in the land development code um and we're going to talk about this later on in the week i don't have time to do it today but i did want to ask you this when is that going to actually come back for full sign off like how far away from completion of this project are we um we are we are in the home stretch obviously the pandemic and not being able to have some of these public meetings and have full participation and input um delayed the project um but it, it's the first time we've undertaken a comprehensive um, 
update of the land development code by by basically a repeal and replace. It's an ordinance. Um, all, overall, there were almost 24 hours of meetings with the Board of County Commissioners over three separate meetings um, in this final review to get um, direction from the board and, and an indication of what they want to see in the in the final version of the code. So that final draft is being put together now. It will be released in the next uh, 10 days. Our planning board will take it up on uh, at a special meeting on June 17th. And uh, depending on the outcome of that, it's a, a plan to go to a special meeting where this is the only agenda item to the Board of County Commissioners on July 29th. So wow. in the home stretch, it's That's, been a long yeah. uh, process, but I think it was I think it was a longer process when it was first done and first implemented. So uh, we've, we've obviously amended the land development code many times over the years, but with all of those changes and uh, all the things we're seeing now with uh, growth and development in the, in the county, it was time and, and it's been a a long undertaking, but one we're we're about to bring to a close. If I tell you we're ten weeks from the end of the process, you feel a little bit of a sigh of relief. <laughs> that sounds like a good uh, thing to me. Well, it, it is a good thing. I mean, there's there are several things you know that that our development services staff have we've, we've kind of been in limbo because it says this yeah. is the old code, but we know that this is what the board has said they want in the new code, and so we're waiting to process some things and and. Uh, it, anxious to have that you know final and approved um after um, you know goes through the, that public hearing process absolutely dan shubler santa rosa county administrator uh dan as always thank you for the time thank you for the work you do for the county uh we look forward to talking to you again soon yes sir thank you